now we want to talk about the costs of different kinds of plants. So in this unit, what we're going to do is we're going to think about the different kinds of generation units we might have and uh, what their costs are going to look like, how we think about their costs of operation. That's going to help us a lot when we start to think about uh, which plants should we run at a given time or what kind of new plants should we build. Different kinds of generators have different cost profiles. Um, so plants will have different capital costs, for example, and the capital cost for an incremental plant will depend on its size. And so we have to think about what's the minimum efficient size for a new plant, or minimum efficient, minimum efficient scale, as economists will often say. What's the minimum efficient scale for a new plant? Uh, and that will, uh, in part, determine the capital cost for that plant. Uh, a generating unit will have a heat rate. We talked about heat rates before, and the heat rate is important because uh, certainly with fossil fuel fired power plants, the heat rate determines most of the variable costs of the power plant. So um, we'll be interested in the, in the capital cost, the heat rate, and of course uh, the operation and maintenance costs. Again, for the purposes of our example, we'll probably divide those up into our fixed and variable costs but any kind of new plant is going to have its own set of operation and maintenance costs and we're going to be interested in uh, those costs as part of the plant's overall cost picture. We want to know what the marginal cost of generation is and the marginal cost of generating with a given power plant is going to change depending on where we're whether we're running it at a very low capacity factor. It's sort of engineering target capacity factor where it will probably have its lowest heat rate and or a very high capacity factor where the heat rate will tend to go back up again. Like before, we're going to generally assume that the heat rate is constant for the purposes of our simple examples. We also want to know the efficient duty cycle for a power plant. We talked about this in the previous unit. That is, well, what is an efficient average capacity factor for a power plant? Uh, can the plant adjust its output rapidly or does it need to run at a steady level? What is its ramp rate? What is its uh, ramp time? What is its minimum run, effective run time? Uh, and what are the minimum and maximum efficient output rates? So, as I was saying before, we normally for the purposes of these discussions, we're going to assume that the plants are running at their sort of engineering target rate, and that'll be where they're most efficient, where they have the lowest heat rate, and uh, so we're going to have a target range. We're going to have a target of running these plants where they have the minimum uh, uh, costs or the maximum efficient output. So. Each of the generators we're going to consider as we put together a portfolio of generators, we're going to think about all these dimensions of cost. Capital, heat rate, operation and maintenance, marginal cost, efficient duty cycle, all the things we've talked about so far. We're going to want to think about how those characteristics come together as we add plants to our portfolio. Okay, so what are the different kinds of plants we might think about? Well, of course, uh, there's the classic uh, fossil fuel central station base load power plant, uh, a big new coal fired power plant or a big new natural gas combined cycle unit. Uh, and these plants are generally going to be used for base load capacity. They, uh, certainly coal fired plants are not designed to ramp up and down repeatedly, so we'll tend to want to run them as base load. Natural gas plants, not so much. They can ramp a little faster. They can follow loads a little better. And so depending on whether we want a plant that's going to run steady as she goes all the time or a plant we need to ramp, uh, we might consider a different mix of coal and natural gas. Then there's hydro, and hydro comes in a couple of flavors too. A uh, hydro facility can uh, be either a run of river 
plant where you just constantly generate according to the flow of water coming past the hydroelectric facility and storage is uh, less of an important characteristic of this facility. Or you can think about a hydro plant as being a dispatchable storage unit. So the water behind the dam is just a huge store of potential energy you can use later as needed. And so you can think about a hydro facility as being just a, a constant generate as the water runs through or a dispatchable, uh, a dispatchable source of power. And we'll think about the differences when we think about our different plants. Then of course we have renewables and the really important characteristic of renewables of course is that generally they are run when they're available. And we're going to talk about why that is a lot as we develop our portfolio of plants and decide when to run them. But renewable plants have a few characteristics. They're highly variable and we tend to run them whenever they're available. Um, we can think about peaker plants. Uh, peaker plants you think about running only when there's high demand. They uh, come in small capital increments but have a relatively high capital cost per unit of output and high operating costs. But when you need them, you really need them. So peaker plants are plants that we don't expect to run that often, but uh, we need them as part of the portfolio because of their high flexibility. Uh, then we have backup generators. Now. Um, it's kind of funny thinking about a backup generator as a kind of um, uh, electricity generation plant, but that's exactly what it is. Uh, it just happens to be behind the meter, happens to be not dispatchable in the sense we normally think about generation units, but uh, backup generators can be a substantial part of the existing capacity and backup generators give us an opportunity to think about variable demand as part of our strategy for man managing the grid. And of course, finally, coming up, we have the frontier of new renewables with batteries um, associated with them. So instead of thinking about having to have a peaker unit associated with every new renewable facility, we might now think about having a battery associated with a new renewable facility. So we have storage combined with generation as a kind of plant we might think about building.